when you're storing explosives, you have to keep the detonators and, and explosives separated from each other. When you're transporting explosives, it's also a requirement to keep the explosives separated. Uh, this uh, truck is equipped with a uh, with an, uh, an explosives transport uh, box that's been specifically designed for transport of explosives and, and meets the requirements of, uh, of the code. You'll notice that there's uh, orange diamond placards on it, which indicate the the type and class of explosives. Those uh, placards are only to be displayed when you're transporting explosives. They're not to be displayed when uh, when there's no explosives uh, uh, being transported on the on the truck. The reason for this is if the truck is in an accident and catches fire, the rescue squad will not come and, and uh, attend the, the the vehicle when it contains explosives and it's on fire. You also notice that there's two red boxes on the back of the truck. Those contain uh, fire extinguishers. There's also uh, large explosive signs on the on the displayed on the truck. Uh, there's a, a requirement in the code for uh, sign, signs of a certain size lettering uh, on a contrasting background. You'll also note that the truck is equipped with a buggy whip and uh, and a beacon light. Uh, the code requires for non-production vehicles. Uh, to be equipped with either a beacon light or a buggy whip. This truck is equipped with both. What we're looking at here, we have the explosives compartment and the detonator compartment. The, it's separated inside by uh, a, a very thick wall of wood and we keep it locked uh, to prevent in, inadvertent access to the explosives. Inside the, this compartment is uh, the cast boosters for priming uh, boreholes. Um, the, uh, the wall that you see behind me here uh, is made out of, uh, out of a very thick layer of wood which separates the uh, explosives compartment of this truck from the cap compartment of the truck. You'll also note that there is no metal fixtures or metal tools uh, within this compartment. This compartment that we're looking at now is the uh, compartment for the detonators. It's separated from the previous compartment that we looked at by the thick layer of wood in that wall that we were talking about. Uh, the detonators uh, are used to uh, initiate the uh, cast boosters, which then initiate the bulk explosives. Okay, the compartment we're looking at now is the uh, is a compartment provided on this uh, truck for the blasters to uh, carry tools and equipment that are not compatible with the transport of explosives. Uh, there'll be metal items in here and. Uh, and this compartment is uh, is used for that purpose. On the back of the, the explosives truck, uh, they've chosen to uh, locate their, their fire extinguishers. We have uh, two fire extinguishers in these cabinets. Those are 20 pound ABC dry chemical extinguishers. The, uh, the blasting truck is required to carry two of these extinguishers uh, at all times when transporting explosives. Well, the transportation of dangerous goods uh, requires placarding of, uh, of explosives uh, uh, consistent with what is being carried. Here we have the, uh, the, the orange diamond placard. Anytime you see orange uh, placarding, it's going to be explosives. And uh, this is the class and, and category of the explosives uh, the, these placards are only to be displayed when explosives are being transported. Any vehicle that, uh, that will be accessing a blast pattern that contains explosives is required to be uh, approved by the Chief Inspector of Mines. The Chief Inspector, uh, uh, in accordance with the code, will require uh, several devices, such as the fire extinguishers we looked at, uh, the signage, the compartments. Uh, one of the uh, features uh, that I wanted to show here is the uh, exhaust has been rooted rather than out the back of the vehicle. It's been rooted uh, above the vehicle, uh, away from uh, the ground to prevent any uh, hot exhaust gases from, uh, from uh, making contact with explosives that may be on the ground. Uh, at the start of any shift, a blaster will obviously be doing a pre-operational check of his vehicle. Uh, one of the items that he will be looking at is uh, ensuring that there's sufficient fuel in the vehicle to, uh, to get him through the shift as it's not allowed to uh, fuel a vehicle that contains explosives.